Great. Welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob, and today what I want to talk to you about is uh, my trip down to New York as I stepped foot in the Solana store. I'm going to talk to you exactly what they're doing over there as they're bringing uh, adoption through education. I got to tell you, I think it's a step in the right direction. I'll also tell you about some, some pitfalls that are going on and uh, everything in between. So first things first, let's just take a look at exactly what is going on in the market. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time on the markets. I've uh, decided that it's I mean, if it's if there's something important, I will. But just so you know, market's down, Nasdaq is down, S and P is down, everything's down pretty much across the board. But I will say that there is uh, one person that continues to buy, and that's whale number three. Whale number three. This is the old address. Uh, links in the description. One uh, P five Z. You can find this on Bitinfo charts. And around July 21st or so, they pretty much just transferred. Uh, everything over uh, July 20th, somewhere in there. And now whale number three or wallet number three, you want to call it. Uh, they, as you can see, have been doing uh, just buying since around that, that June, July uh, date period. And they've, they have only sold on July 26th, 28th. But along this time, as it's been going down and down and down the price of Bitcoin, they're buying up a pretty massive amount, 320 here on August, uh, August 16th, 320. 548, August 19th, and so on and so forth. So uh, this, uh, I'm, this is not financial advice, but uh, if, if I'm looking at these things, this is how people get rich. Money isn't made in the bull markets. It's made in the bear markets when no one wants to touch this because they're afraid of what's going on. And that's pretty much exactly how I made all my money uh, in the last, uh, <laughs> the last bear market. So that's what's going on in the markets itself. And then just as a, as a refresher, don't forget that uh, as one thing goes down, uh, you want another part to go up. So if you're looking at housing or crypto or, or uh, markets, you always want things to, to balance out. And that's why I talk about uh, Masterworks. Just so you know, I've got two. This is, of course, investing into fractionalized shares of fine art. I have a Banksy and a Basquiat. Again, these are shares. I don't own the whole thing. I'm not a, I'm not a multi multi-billionaire, but uh, it uh, works out pretty well. And then since October, since I bought uh, both of those paintings, or more specifically the Basquiat, I'm up about 40%. And just so you know, year over year, annualized returns, Masterworks has done, and actually has outperformed Russell, NASDAQ, S&P, and the crypto market. And year to date, they're up 15%. And why is that? It's because like I've always talked about, rich people are crazy. They don't care how the market goes. They want to buy fine art. And this is Banksy. The original portrait was uh, 1.4 million. And of course, after it shredded itself, that's 25.4 million. Why? Who knows? Because people love art. Also, just so you know that uh, these are registered with the SEC as these are uh, securities. So you don't have to worry about uh, all those problems. Uh, here's all the documents. If you want to take a deep dive and uh, the video and just sign up, there's a link in the description. It looks just like this and you can have at it. Now, again, you don't have to use the affiliate link. That's fine, you can go right to Masterworks, but uh, this is what I'm doing uh, as far as diversification. All right, so that takes care of the markets itself. Now let's talk about the New York experience. And I honestly had no idea I was actually in this area. I was we were just walking around, uh, me and my wife and a couple of friends went to New York for the US Open, and uh, we're just hanging around downtown, and uh, I just looked at the side, I'm like, wow, Holy, I go, holy S, this is uh, the Solana store. <laughs> I should probably step in there. And this is essentially what it looks like. Very nice. I mean, all the stores in New York are very nice. Uh, that right there, uh, that's a gentleman uh, that helped me. Uh, that is uh, Cameron. And uh, when I walked in the store, it's pretty funny. He goes, uh, can I help you? I go, yeah, I'm just looking around. He goes, do you know what these things are? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I follow them. And he goes, yeah, I know who you are. And I was like, oh, shoot, maybe this is... Uh, probably maybe caught the videos of where I was bashing on Solana and uh, how it uh, has uh, DDoS attacks and uh, how it kind of comes down every so often. So I was like, yeah, that's me. So we're talking about it. Very nice guy though. Uh, Cameron uh, showed me around of what's going on. So here was, here was the whole spiel about how this all works. So you walk into the store, he's like, this is Solana. And, uh, I, and I asked him the question, I go, how do you deal with this? Cause like for me, I, I mean, we know what's going on. But for, the, for the, more, the majority of people that come in, what happens? And he goes, yeah, it's very simple. They come in, they go, what is this? And you know, we talk about what Solana is and what crypto is and Web3 versus Web2. And then uh, it's just better to show everybody. So the first thing he did is he said, I'm just going to take you down, down the trip. Now, I didn't do the whole uh, uh, experience, like how you would take a person down because it took about 10 minutes and we were in a rush of time. But this is essentially what uh, Cameron showed me. It was very simple. He goes, take your phone out. 
took my phone out. And he said, uh, because there's uh, some spotty reception, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect to the kiosk as far as the internet so you can have some good Wi-Fi. So I scanned uh, the QR code, which is what uh, a lot of people are used to these days because of uh, coronavirus, as we would scan all the menus. So I scanned that, got into uh, uh, the, the store Wi-Fi. He goes, great. Now I want you to scan this code. And of course, that downloaded the Phantom Wallet. Great. So again, you have to un understand that what he's doing is he's taking people through the process so they understand you know, how this all works and, and why to do it and things like that. So great. So I have a phantom wallet, which I didn't have in my phone for some reason. I actually just only had it on my computer. And uh, so he said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come over here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make uh, an NFT. And we're going to take a picture and I'm going to send it to your, your wallet. And I'm like, all right, sounds good. So uh, this is me and Cameron. And I took a picture. And then, uh, of course, uh, once this uh, all went through, I was asking him, I go, hey, man, what's up with that, uh, with that phone that you guys are doing? Is that actually going to come through? And he goes, yeah, that's going to come through. I go, well, is it, is it going to happen? He said, yeah, Q1 2023. And he said it like as if it was fact. I was like, okay, well, that's it. He goes, yeah, we, you know, we're going to go through. It's on an Android device. Uh, it's going to cost about you know, X amount of dollars. It didn't seem like an exorbitant amount. He said, uh, we'll have everything that'll you know, go from web two to web three. And um, it'll be a blockchain phone, essentially. And I go, great. And that's really going to happen? He goes, yeah, it's really going to happen. I was like, hmm. Well, uh, if that is true, and I took a look at it. It looks like a normal average phone. So we'll see if this is the next uh, great uh, adoption process. I just uh, was surprised at just how, how adamant everybody was uh, there about it. And they're like, yeah, it's just, that's just a foregone conclusion. So we'll see if that happens. But anyhow, back to the, the NFT process. So we're here and uh, took a picture. And what he did, he says, okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send that to your phantom wallet. And of course, bam, there it was. There's me and Cameron looking, I'm looking at uh, nothing. And, uh, and he walked me through the whole process. He goes, okay, so we're all about NFTs here. And there was uh, two or three more uh, different uh, QR codes we could scan so we could get free NFTs. And along that way, he talked about if you want to buy anything in the store. And of course, as we minted these things, it didn't really cost anything at all. He goes, as, as we go through the store, you can actually purchase everything at 50% off for uh, anything that's uh, like uh, in in real life, like they had stickers and they had T-shirts and, you know, just goofy merch like that. So uh, that was essentially how it was just going through the whole process. And I thought about it and it was interesting to get people into that whole process of uh, understanding what NFTs and minting them and and realizing that it doesn't take, you know, cost an arm and a leg we're doing through Ethereum. And I was with my wife and a couple of friends and I'm like, do you guys want to do this? They're like, why? Why would we want to do this? This doesn't make any sense to us. And uh, I was going to bring him into Cameron, and I was like, yeah, that does make sense because, I mean, maybe they don't really get the whole process of what is going on. But then I remembered something. And this is, if we're taking a look at uh, NFTs and uh, why we need them, this kind of came up as I was going through this whole process because there's going to be people like me who get into it, there's going to be people like uh, friends of mine and my wife who are like, I don't understand. This makes no sense to me. But it really comes down to functionality. And this, this is, brings me back to my day when everybody went through the internet. They're like, why do I need email? Why do I need, I can just pick up the phone, hard, a landline, and I can call somebody and tell them exactly what's going on. Why would I need to send them an email? It doesn't make any sense to me. This was the real thought process. And it's the same thing, I think, with NFTs. Why would I need an NFT? This is just a goofy picture. that is absolutely nothing. With Solana doing these things at the kiosk store itself, I thought it was interesting because now they can start to see just how easy an NFT is. And not just the goofy pictures and they had, uh, they had DGen Ape Academy all across the board and, and we're talking about, and it was great. But first of all, it was cheap. Second of all, it was very fast. And then when I took a look at, if you think about what NFTs are, it's not just about uh, these goofy gifs or gifs or whatever you want to call them really if you take a look at nfts this is the whole process itself i mean these are the things that we we're going to use in the, in the future and we're going to need a chain like a solana like a cardano like an avalanche like a polka dot like an ethereum if they ever you know get the sharding and all that stuff and they can drop the fees this is what we're going to be using these things for digital ids uh tickets digital artwork we already have Proof of achievement and skills, pictures, profiles, domains and usernames, intellectual property, 
counterfeit protection, emails and messages, medical records, voting, memberships for digital access, content rights, degrees, diplomas, legal documents. And, I mean, everything you could think of as what we're going to need. So when I think about right now, like what are we doing as NFTs? Like I don't get it, honestly, as far as like the like NFTs. And Cameron was, was telling me, he's like, well, you know, if, if you mint these, these NFTs here, then of course, later down the road, it'll uh, give you access to uh, further functionality and utility and, and all these things. And, and again, for a person looking down that way, it's not going to, it's not, I don't think it's going to really sink in for everybody. But I think if you play it out like this in the future, we're going to need these NFTs to do a lot of different things. I think that's where the home run is and the education. And just by them having that physical store and walking through it and just having people just go, here's, I'll answer your question. Here's what it is. Here's what it is. I think that's the route to adoption, which is just a bunch of uh, education and explaining why this is the new thing. And that's just uh, my thought process there. So there is that part. But then there is also this other thing in the back of my mind, which, which talks about, you know, Solana. And I, I know people are going to, of course, uh, there's some people love Solana, some people love Cardano, and there's some people who love Ethereum. And they're going to say, well, Solana, you know, breaks down and, and uh, there's, there's slowdowns. And yes, that's true. And uh, Ethereum is high transact. Yeah, yes, that, that's also true. All these things are very true. However, when I was taking a look at them, like, what's, what's perfect in the beginning? And I'm not talking about the ecosystems. The ecosystems that are built on Solana or that are built on Cardano or built on Avalanche, those are susceptible to hacks and frauds and things like that. That's the ecosystem. It's the main chain. So if we're just talking about the main chain, not the ecosystem. We have to be fair about all that. So what I want to take a look at was, well, what's the cost and what's the transactions per second and all those things that people talk about. And there's a couple of different websites, explorer.solana.com. And you can see right here that if we take a look at uh, transactions per second, you're looking at right now is today, 3,200. And uh, that's pretty good. I can see there's a TPS history, average ping time, so on and so forth. Great. And also, if we take a look at uh, Solana Beach, and what I'm looking for here is just, again, the same thing. If we're looking at uh, transactions per second, circulating supply, current TPS, 3234. Okay, it's about the same. Uh, and then also, my question then was, well, how cheap is it? So if we take a look at transactions, it'll bring it up right here. Uh, and these are all just happened a lot of them 30 seconds ago. You're looking at point, I mean, really nothing, let's be honest. Point zero 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 five. right now, one salon is $30. So that's fractions of a penny across the board. So that knocks off two questions, transactions per second and cost for transactions. It's pretty nice. However, there are some things in, lingering in my mind that I think about. And we answered this question here in the Cardano ghost chain uh, spreadsheet or uh, Google file. And one of the things that was brought up was, well, you know, with Ethereum, they have, as far as like uh, transactions, uh, they do quite a bit. And uh, this one right here says on Sunday, July 31st, transaction count <clears throat> 1,158,000. And Cardano only had 91,000. But then <clears throat> this is through Masari. You can take a look at the adjusted transaction volume. This is the estimated on-chain transaction volume for the past 24 hours. Adjusted, try and remove some types of non-economic transactions. You know, signing things back and forth, wash trading or whatever, or just, just bots moving back and forth just to seem like there's a lot of transaction volume. And if you do that in Masari, you can definitely see here there's a difference. Uh, Ethereum the same day you had adjusted transaction volume was $1.52 billion uh, worth of transaction volume. And uh, the same day, there was $7.8 billion with the transaction volume on Cardano. And you can verify, again, all this. There's links on this spreadsheet or on this uh, um, slideshow. There's also links in the description you can check out. And one thing that did concern me, I mean, we just saw transactions per second. We just saw the fees. But if I take a look at Masari, in the same way that I could uh, take a look here through Masari and find all the all the uh, transaction volumes and adjusted transaction volumes. With Solana, it doesn't really have it there. So I don't know if that's just uh, they're catching up or what exactly is happening, as opposed to Ethereum, which has uh, all the on-chain data. But again, on-chain data can be manipulated, and that is, uh, is one of the things that concerns me. But to sum it all up, 
I think it's a step in the right direction and we'll see which one it is. I don't know which one's going to make it. I don't really care. Uh, I just try to uh, invest into as many as I think that could do well. And then as time moves on and we see which one pulls ahead, I will go with that one. And that's it because I'm just an investor. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. And that does it for today. So today uh, we're doing a little something different. Uh, usually we do a live stream. What I want to try is I want to try to do this um, in, a, in a recorded fashion. I am live uh, in the chats. You've seen me already. And now what's going to happen is we're going to go through the Q&A. And to do the Q&A, what I want to do was just do a, what's called a redirect. And this might actually work. I'm not for sure. We're going to see how it all works out. So to redirect, if you have things turned on, uh, it'll just redirect you right after this show and we can go into it. However, uh, you see that, of course, I'm in the, in the comment section here and if this is just a live premiere. So if you want to go to the Q&A and you have the autoplay is on, it'll automatically re redirect. If your autoplay is off, very simple. All you got to do is just uh, click on the video that comes up right here and uh, whatever I say. And, and then we'll go to the Q&A and I'll answer all your questions the best of my ability. It's just a way to, to break things up and make things a little bit more concise. So that's it for today. So uh, if you like the video, thumbs up and subscribe, all that good stuff. If not, come on over to the Q&A, ask me any questions you want to. It's going to happen right now.